Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you're watching this, know that I appreciate you. Um, I have got to do something about my facial expressions when someone has said something that I think is ridiculous or asinine or anything I don't like. And, um, it's green light. Or anything I don't like. Um, because... <laughs> I, I think I mentioned in a previous video that someone had irritated me, so I chose not to speak because I know that my tongue will cut them to pieces. So I had a conversation with my supervisor about that incident uh, Friday. And um, she's so funny. She said, I know you didn't say anything, but you looked at her. And she mentioned that you looked at her. And I said, yeah, I probably did. And she said, even though you didn't say anything, baby, your face says a whole lot. I almost cracked up right then and there. Oh my gosh, because that is yet another thing that I have inherited from my grandmother. My mom did it too, but not like my grandmother did. And you don't know what I'm talking about because I did a Facebook Live video. And uh, all on there and I know that my facial expressions tell I know they tell but I guess with the however I looked at her Friday let her know that I was done I was done so my supervisor straightened the whole thing out I did not have much conversation with this person at all today. And I, I didn't purposely do it, but I'm glad that it didn't happen because I really just want to get my work done and have a good day. And that's hard to do when you've got someone in one moment wants to be your best friend but then in the next wants to be your boss your mother and your lover that thing's taking okay it's gone now um, but I told my supervisor I said my issue with her is not just that My issue with this young person is that she was speaking to me as if I were one of her children. And that's not okay with me. Because it's now coming across as condescending. Oh gosh, this car. I'm trying to get this car looked at this week. going to take it to a mechanic that's two towns away from us, but I just don't think it'll make it. So I talked to someone else and they're supposed to try to get to me this week because this cannot keep going on. Please go around me. You see I'm not going any faster. Um, I 
I'm sorry, I got distracted by this car doing what it wants to do instead of what I needed to do. Um, but yeah, she was speaking to me as if I was one of her children. And that comes across as condescending and belittling to me. As I think it would most people. And um, I'm just not cool with that. I'm just not cool with that. So my supervisor had a, co a conversation with her last week. She had a conversation with me today after she had a conversation with my boss. And my boss said he actually has overheard some of our discussions, some of our communications. and. He feels the same way that um, she and I need to co to communicate as well as possible because it's not going to go out well. It's not going to it's not going to pan out well if we keep having conversations and she keeps speaking to me the way that she does. I just, I have a low tolerance for, now this is the thing, overall, she's a sweetheart of a girl, overall, great person, overall, and the way she speaks to me isn't reserved just for me, she speaks to all support personnel this way. So it's as if she believes that we are less than her. And it could be a cultural thing. It could be a personality thing. I don't know. But what I do know is that it can't be a common thing. Not for me. Not with me. I'm just not that person to do that with. But I thought it was hilarious that my supervisor said what she said because my husband tells me all the time that I give him these looks and he's like I don't like that and I'm like what are you talking about what look did I give you and he could never describe it but he says I give him a look so I guess I gave her the look too My boss, my supervisor thought, I mean, she was laughing too, but she was still serious about it. So I told her, I, you know, I understand. <laughs> the way she said, baby, your look tells it all. I just thought that was so funny. So funny. But I couldn't laugh because it was supposed to be a serious meeting. So, but yeah. So it appears that my eyes can cut you just as well as my tongue can. Oh my gosh. But I did make a Facebook post, a Facebook live video. And if I figure out how to download it and upload it, I will. But I don't know. I've tried it before and it didn't work. I'll try it again. But um, I was saying how I understand my mother and my grandmother more now. Because my they had this habit of not speaking to you or not acknowledging you in certain circumstances. And my grandmother did it more so than my mom did. And I used to think it was so rude. I used to think it was so rude because it was like they were ignoring you. And that was like the rudest thing ever to me. Like you would say something to them especially my grandmother and she wouldn't say anything she wouldn't respond she wouldn't flinch she wouldn't even look up and acknowledge you and I have found that I do the exact same thing but I know why now and I and I that was the title of the live practicing grace 
so I now know that that's what my grandmother was doing because it's what I do. It's practicing grace. Because if I speak what is on my mind, I will truly hurt your feelings. If you said something to me that is out of pocket. Now, yeah, you're gonna, people are gonna say stuff that I don't like. That's fine, that's a human thing. They say stuff that I don't like. That's common. I mean, it's going to happen. And people are gonna say things that I think are ignorant. That's yet another, I mean, common thing. Lack of knowledge, you, then you're gonna say something stupid. You're gonna say something ignorant. People are gonna say something that I consider stupid. Another common thing. But when you say something that I think, and you not only say it, but the way you say it, and I think it's condescending, insulting, disrespectful, yeah. I will chew you up and spit you out as if you were a piece of candy that suddenly got nasty. And I know that I will. And I guess the way I look at people when I'm choosing not to speak does the exact same thing. It cuts you down. Slices you right in half. So, yeah. But, I, you know, I have tried on my own to fix that. And it's just not possible for me. What is going on? vehicle it's just not possible for me to fix on my own so I've been praying about that thing I have I've been praying about it because I know that the tongue is the strongest muscle that we have and you know it can be as sharp as a two-edged sword um, but I don't know any Bible verses about my eyes and my facial expressions when I choose not to speak. I don't know any Bible verses for that. So I guess I better read some more. So I've put in a request. I've prayed. And I put in a request to God. That he's going to have to help me with that. He's going to have to do a facelift. Or give me some Botox or something. In that moment. So that I do not give person the. Give persons. Give people. That look. That look. So. Yeah. Do you have a look? Do you? That will, that will slice somebody in half. Do you have a look? Okay. I'm parked. I'm at the store. I got something to return. Peace and blessings. Remember to walk in your purpose and know that I appreciate you.